never in the history of humanity has anybody had a life just like yours. Never in the future of humanity will anybody have a life just like yours. And no one alive today has a life just like yours. So, so the way you make sense out of your life is unique. It's unique historically, it's unique for the rest of mankind, and it's unique now, which means you're delusional in a unique way. And no one shares that, which is problematic, right? All of a sudden it's like, oh my god, here's the rub, we're pack animals. Well, the few things we know about human beings, we've come out of the womb with a desire to connect with other people. Some people have a huge need. A lot of you in this room, you know, or loan originators, people that are com in, in commissioned jobs where they're paid to make deals, typically have a strong drive to connect with people. There's other people with a, with a, with a you know, a little weaker drive. They probably go into IT. But the point is, <laughs> <laughs> no IT people It's here. true. <laughs> of course they're not here. They wouldn't come if they're invited. It's like, Dude, people, no, I think I'll break code. Um, but my point is, we all have this need. We are. I mean, if you look at a map of where humanity resides, we cluster together. It may be for survival purposes, it may be because we like each other's company, uh, for the most part, but we do want to connect with each other. But now you've got seven billion people, uniquely delusional, with a desire to connect with each other. Which really doesn't come as a surprise, because John, uh, John Hopkins University, when they studied, studied longevity, their belief, they theorized that this body is perfectly designed to last 120 years, minimum, 120 years. In the United States, we're getting about 80 out of it. I mean, if you bought any piece of equipment and you only got about two-thirds of its lifetime, you'd be pretty disappointed. So Johns Hopkins says, what's running this thing down? Well, big bag of duh, stress. Thank God, we found the Holy Grail. Now we know how to make people live longer. It's stress. If we eliminate stress, we will live longer. Now, what's the number one cause of stress? People. <laughs> You start putting all that together, we're kind of a weird creature because we're born with a desire to connect with the very thing that kills us, <laughs> other people. And the reason they kill us is because they're living a delusion that doesn't match our delusion. So when we expect their behavior to match our behavior, that is fundamentally flawed because their behavior is predicated on a series of schemas that were formed from experiences that we never had. So what they're doing makes perfect sense to them based on the life they've had, but may make little sense to you. Add to that, you've got people like Socrates and Plato and Aristotle all the way through Carl Jung and modern day psychologists who start to realize, okay, this is a completely effed up model. There's got to be, I, I mean, I don't care if you believe in creationism or evolution or whatever, how we got to be where we are as a creature, but no model would predict this type of dynamic where you're born with a desire, Cindy, to connect with Rosie and yet you're both individually delusional and she's going to disappoint you and you're going to think she's strange. <laughs> that is, I mean, that would be one messed up God, right, that did that, that said, hey, let's, let's try something. Uh, right, so they theorized, and it's widely accepted among the applied cognitive psychology community, that you have to be born with certain schemas that make you human. So. So these are not experience-driven schemas. They're species-based schemas, that they're in your brain from the word go, that make you uniquely human. And they believe there's four of these. And this is a large part of what the book's about, is that as we develop, as we reach full cognitive development in our lives, these four schemas, of which we all share, it is what Jung would call the collective unconscious, the, the fiber that runs between us, that allows us to, to, to tolerate each other enough to not kill each other. But these develop into preferences. So while you have all four, one of them tends to have a bigger impact on the way you perceive the world and the way you interact with others.